Hey, what's up guys, it's Rich. Welcome back to another video. Today we are playing some more Apex Legends of course, and this is one of my favorite games that I've had in season 13, just because of the ending, just the absolute clutch factor. Also at the end of this game, I did like two or three minutes where I broke down the thought process and what I was doing at each time, what I did well, what I did wrong. So I read some of your comments saying that you appreciate it when I do that kind of stuff. So hopefully you enjoy it. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. I'll see you all in five and a half seconds, my friends. I hope this is the same team. If it is, it's a 2v2 and a separate 1v1. I've got to win my 1v1. I'm going to push him early because I've got an alternator. Very few guns can compete with this. I'll tell you what can compete with an alternator though. Another alternator. And high ground. We get some ammo. Hold on team. I'm coming. Oh, the Octane's on me. All right, well, hey, listen, I did my job. I won the 1v1. Looks like the 2v2 didn't go down quite as well. This guy's got a Sentinel. Don't leave Wraith, please. I was fighting. I, can't, I cannot let this guy set up. We'll never get these guys... Down, you know, we'll never kill him. There we go. Not bad. That was the whole squad. Or thirty thirty for some range. I'm gonna have to go over five teammate. And stop looting, otherwise he's going to leave. Which is fair enough. I mean, Octane could definitely do this because he can get there quicker and I need to heal and whatever, but uh, I don't want the Wraith to leave. People are usually very impatient, and it's fair enough because with the way the game goes at the moment, if you die at the start and you wait for the... Good grief. I hate these spinny things. If you, ha if you have to wait around to get respawned, you'll end up just having one gunfight, whatever. I understand why people leave. You come back though. Got a lot of good stuff. Look at this. Eva 8. Supply bins everywhere. We've got a care package landing at PS5. I'm pretty sure they were fighting at Fountain. Evo here. Level three. I was giving the Evo shield back. Got a hop up here. Camera point. What's the mess? I've been way too nice to each other. Stop stop trading shields and let's get involved in this fight. Let's get some proper loot. We're gonna get some purple shields. Get over here and start. Start shooting people in the back, you see? That guy's gonna get away anyway. I'm coming. Don't die. You guys aren't firing. Is there an action over there? No? Okay. Could be involved in this right now. I could be shooting them right in the back. I think someone else is healing up outside. And you see the door open and close like that suspiciously. You know what's going on. It's pretty good tough. There might be a team up here. My teammates are firing at. I didn't make it. It's bangle or passive. It's absolutely broken. Okay, that's not I'm slipping you guys in, okay? Come back. There's three of us now. Uh, someone look at the rope. They're gonna come up behind us. Have to be very careful. Yep. Yeah. This way. Chill here, fine. The race draft, that sucks. Was her phase on call then or something? She could have just phased to us. Don't worry about it, there's just 83 decoys down there. Goodness knows who to shoot. See, I sort of expected people to be behind us there because they were fighting inside. 
And if there's one thing people do on Apex, is they like to third party. So of course they're gonna pump the road behind us. What's this guy doing? Red armor. We have to get top of rope and then we can look down on this team. We can't get banner from like running low ground here. It's too, it's too risky. It's difficult though, because you've got to try and track these things in your head. Like you've got to think to yourself, as you're in the gunfight, where are we going to get Purdy from and how how are we going to escape it? I was so ready for someone to come up behind there. These things you pick up though, I guess. Necessary, the right fault. Ashalt. Got a guy here with a dweep machine. Don't give up on us, Wraith. I'm gonna get you. I got smokes. Oops. We've got a respawn close here, but it's low ground. And if this team comes behind us on high ground, you get killed there so easily. Thank you. Oh, hey, I like this guy. I don't know why I sounded like a New Yorker there. Convenient. Give me a second. I'm going to be honest with you, I wasn't going to use this close respawn beacon. I was saying, can you use the mobile respawn? I'm going to look down on these guys to make sure they don't rush us. Just, just protect the rope. Don't let them come with the rope. Please look at the rope. Give my shields a recharge. Oh, this what is here? I forgot about these guys. This time will be different. Nice. Little armor switch for me. Quick first. Thanks every shot. See a disaster. Don't read really it. Don't really need that down. I don't know if you saw the octane switch to my broken red. I like. We were getting rushed. There is no way we had enough time to heal that up. The only reason I wanted the armor switch so bad, even though it wasn't technically my kill, is because octane was full shield. I had my shields got knocked. You know. I need ammo before I go back up. This is pointless. Only two more enemy squads. They killed them anyway. I can't go up there. <laughs> Ten seconds. Yeah, I, I can't. I cannot get your banner. I might have to switch to this um, wingman. Having range is absolutely fine if you've got a full team, but it's a terrible idea to have one like long range, like three times kind of gun. I mean, if, if it's on a flatline or a Spitfire or an R three hundred one, I think that's fine. But a thirty thirty, sort of like long range, I think it's a terrible idea if you're solo. And I, I cannot get these guys banners. Like the rope makes so much noise. There's probably three of them alive, at least two. And even if they moved, they would just gatekeep me at the end of the walkway. I I don't know. And the Val Corpting. That whole thing was a disaster. I should have let Octane use the mobile respawn and I should have just stayed looking at the rope. I need to hide from the Valk passive, otherwise they're gonna triple land on me, I think. Well, good news is they're big scrapping. Even better news, this is going to be a vault or a mastiff. Or a. Okay. Are you telling. Look, look. That is the worst care package. That literally just landed. Gold knockdown and a boosted loader. What an absolute joke. I never get vaults and I never. In fact, I never actually get any weapons from care packages anymore. And it's played this smart. 
but this is the team that killed us because that's the Octane's red, which was originally my red. What happened to the fight, guys? You guys were... You guys were having the biggest fight ever, and he's all died down. What happened? As much as I want to shoot this guy in the back, I really cannot be the instigator here. Just gonna play this smart. I mean, the kills aren't going anywhere. If they're not fighting, it's completely pointless engaging first. They're gonna Valkyr up here, aren't they? If I stand here, would it, st would it stop them from coming? No. I hoped it would dissuade them from landing up top, but. It didn't work. What idiot put that smoke there? That's the I'm hoping the other team will see that there's a down. And they will hard engage. I need them to get into like a proper close quarters fight. I need it to get messy for me to win this. There you go. Is that a car? It's always a good sound if you can hear a car fully auto. They have to be somewhat close, surely. Here we go, finally. Hello, friend. That's sad. me. Oh my god. I cannot believe I've won that game. That wasn't even like perfectly ideal, that situation at the end. That was like two separate 1v3s. Like, granted, I did shoot one of them in the back. And they did down the ash, I think. Because I don't think I downed the ash. Good grief. 3,400 damage I ended on. That's pretty good. Oh, that's a shame I didn't get close to 4,000 if I could have farmed a little bit at the early game. Because I don't have the 4k on Bangalore. That was good though. So I just wanted to talk through some things that I did well in this last engagement. And some things that I could have done better. First of all, I was wrong. I did down the ash initially. She's the one I shot in the back and she just crawled away. Also... I am nowhere near a professional on Apex. I'm decent in public games and I know how to work the flow of regular players and their tendencies to my advantage, but that's pretty much the extent of my skill set here. Now, one thing that I've learned from League of Legends that I applied in this gunfight is that you can treat your health as a resource and trade it in situations where it's more beneficial to you. Look at this moment here. I see that I have maybe 30 shield left to work with and I know I have a fresh red swap right next to me. So instead of switching to that red shield and leaving this 31 on the ground, I have an opportunity with my great angle on this Gibby to do some good damage and to disengage whenever I want because all I have to do is press the duck button. The goal of peeking here was to trade my remaining shield with some of Gibby's shield and to make him have to heal. This is because we know that the Valkyrie is flying above us and that allows us to separate those two players because your ultimate goal in these situations is always to split 
every fight into separate 1v1s. Now, one thing I did bad here was this peak. I mistimed it with my reload horrendously. If you don't know, if you fully empty out a magazine, there is an added animation to the end of the reload that makes it quite a bit longer. I should have waited a split second more before challenging here, but it didn't matter because both of them were pretty weak. Now, when I get these two knocks, I know that I have a great chance of winning if I just disengage and pop a bat. You never want to take too much health damage because it takes far longer to heal it up. Now, I could thirst for an armor switch, but it's too risky because I don't know where the Valk is. So I back up and use a door to pop a bat. Doors are, as you know by now, so clutch in these moments. And I get the bat off and all of a sudden, it's a fair 1v1. Now, after a quick trade, I take the high ground to pop another bat. This is because I need to buy time to finish this battery. If I stay on the ground and she sees me and pushes me, I can't do anything. But now that I'm up top, when I hear her flying up, I can buy time by dropping and cutting the line of sight to finish the bat. Now, when I can't see the Valk, I quickly try and first one of my down so I can have an armor switch ready to go. This is really beneficial for two reasons. One, it benefits me because I've got the armor switch. But two, if that player is still in the game, the Valkyrie can't armor switch that very quickly at all because she would have to pick up the banner first. So it's only advantageous to me, really. As it turns out, the Ash bled out in a really good spot. So I push over and I want to play around this death box because it's free armor. So I take this gunfight right next to it. And as it turns out, I didn't need it. But it was there if necessary. Again, I'm not the world's best player, but everything that I've talked about here can be learned pretty easily. At least it's a lot easier to do this than to just be like, oh, I need to work on my accuracy. Because obviously, like I'm always trying to be more accurate, but that's difficult. Everyone can learn to play these situations better. And one thing that's helped me a lot is actually recording and watching my games back like this and seeing what I did well and seeing what I didn't do so well. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you all in the next one. Mm, bye.